What's happening guys? Welcome back to another video on the channel. Today we've got a fun one we're going to be talking about and that is a new feature here in DaVinci Resolve 18 that is the Object Mask Tool. Now no doubt you've probably already seen a little bit about this from some of our favorite YouTubers out there but as I've been getting into and trying out this tool I thought it'd be interesting to see well how well does this tool actually work. So what I'm going to do in this video is run over the tool and the buttons and the dials just to show you what it does and quickly explain it. But then we're going to jump in and take some footage where we start with a simple clip like this with the penguin where we try the object mask on the penguin, see how it works. And then we want to get a little more complicated with our clips because, hey, when we have things that are isolated and easy like that penguin, sure, of course it's easy, right? So I want to try out some other stock footage clips where the track might get a little bit more complicated. Maybe there's some things in the way and see how that works out. The stock footage I'm going to be using today comes from ArtGrid and ArtGrid is the sponsor of today's video. ArtGrid has so much awesome stuff because let's be honest, you can't always get out there to film everything that you need. Maybe you need some awesome epic drone footage like this right here. You can head on over to ArtGrid and check it out. Maybe you're looking for an ambulance scene driving down the street through the city. You just search for that. There you go, there's an ambulance in the city for you. Maybe you're trying to find a video about somebody playing soccer. Search for it, there it is. There's so many cool clips on ArcGrid, it's crazy. And they just keep adding stuff all the time. So definitely get on there, check out ArcGrid if you haven't and you need some stock footage, you're trying to sweeten up your project a little bit, you want it to look better, definitely check out ArcGrid. I use them all the time, love ArcGrid. ArcGrid, thank you so much for sponsoring today's video. And if you are interested in signing up for ArcGrid, I got a link in the description below. You can click on that, you'll get two months for free. You pay for the year, you get two months for free. So check that out if you're interested in giving ArcGrid a try. So not only are we going to go through and use these stock footage clips, but I thought, hey, you know what? Okay, I expect that they're going to probably work a little better on those stock footage clips. They're shot with awesome cameras. You know, they, they, they look great. They're cinematic. Um, they just really are, you know, top-notch clips. Well, what if I get out there and I film some clips on my own? How's it going to work on my clips? And you're going to see, we're going to look at a couple examples here of me uh, tearing around on my little four-wheeler. It's actually, it's actually my kid's four-wheeler. See how does the object mask work on those clips? And I think you might be impressed uh, at how well it actually does. So let's jump into it with this penguin clip here. Get right into the object mask tool. So I got my clip here. You want to jump over into the color tab right here. So click on that. All right, so in the color tab here, let's make sure we are all looking at the exact same thing. So come on up to workspace and right here, reset UI layout. Hit that and you should be seeing exactly what I see here as far as layout is concerned on the screen. So let's get to our magic mask tool and in this case, the object mask. Where do we go to do that? Jumping in here real quick, I think I forgot to mention that the Magic Mask tool, both for people and for objects, is only available in the studio version. So if you have the free version, you're not going to see it in there. But you probably still want to check out this video because you want to know what can the studio version do. I can tell you that it just the studio version just runs better, runs smoother. You got all the tools. It's $295 one-time fee. You don't have to pay to upgrade, right? Like some of the other uh, you know companies out there. No subscription. You don't got to pay to upgrade. One-time fee. You got resolved for the rest of your life. Come on over to this icon right here. We've got magic mask and it's going to open it up on this side of my screen for me. And if I want to move this guy over to the middle here, I'm going to click on this little icon right over here in the corner. And that's going to go ahead and just bring this over. Show me a little more info here. So let's take a look at our magic mask window real quickly. So up at the top here, magic mask, obviously that's where we are right here. You got these two options. You have person and you have object. So we're going to be using the object one for this example. You got your reset button right here in case you mess something up. You can click on this drop down and you can clear your strokes and uh, do a few different things in here if you need to do any of those. Down in this area here, you see a little timeline that goes along with our clip. So let's take a look at our icons right up here above our little timeline. So this first one is go to the reference frame. So that's going to be what frame did you start to draw your line in that says, hey, this is the object I want to mask. The next icon we have here is go to the first frame of the tracked area. And it'll do just that. Go to the first frame of the tracked area. The next icon we have here is track backwards one frame at a time. Next, we've got track backwards continuously. So wherever your playhead is, it'll just keep tracking backwards through your clip and track the object that you've selected. Next, we got the pause button. Pretty self-explanatory. The next button, the arrows going both ways here is track from your point where your playhead is forwards and then track from that same point backwards. It's going to do it all at once for you. So that way you don't have to click forwards and then backwards. It'll just do it both for you. So pretty convenient. The next icon here is track forwards continuously. So wherever your playhead is, it'll track forwards continuously till it gets to the end of your clip. The next icon we've got here is track forward one frame at a time. And the last one here is jump to the end of your track. So the last air, the last frame of your area that you track. 
It's gonna just jump right to that last frame. Next, we've got a eyedropper with a plus icon. That's gonna allow you to select your object mask. And then we have the eyedropper with a minus icon. That's gonna say, don't include these areas that I draw over. Do not include those in the track for a particular object. The next button is that you can invert your mask. So let's say I select the penguin and then I actually wanna select the opposite. Well, you can just go ahead and click invert mask right here. Next, you can toggle on and off your overlay so you can see where your object is selected. And I'll show you that in a second here. And lastly, this just toggles on and off some extra settings that you have here on the side. And just taking a quick look at them, this just helps refine your mask a little bit. You've got quality, you can do it faster or better. I'm gonna stick with faster now because just a heads up, it does take a little bit of power for these uh, tracks to work. I'm on a Mac mini uh, M1, 16 gigs of RAM. It's a little slow, it takes a little while. If I was doing a lot of these, I'd probably want a more powerful machine, but it does an okay job, it's not too bad. And uh, I'll show you the elapsed times of how long these things take on the screen when we do it. And then you've got some other options here on how you can kind of clean up the selection a little bit. I'm not gonna go over each and every single one of them, but if your selection looks a little, eh, like, you know, it could be a little bit better, try playing with some of these sliders here and see if you can get it to look a little bit better. So that's the overview of the Magic Mass object selection window here. That's like a mouthful there, object selection window. So now let's get into actually doing this. All right, first example here, we're working with the penguin. So how do we do it? I wanna come and click on my eyedropper with the plus and I'm gonna zoom in. I'm just gonna select my penguin. Now I wanna make sure I get the black areas, some of the white, kind of draw a line like that. I'm gonna give it a second, zoom back out, if I slide over. Now, how do I know what's selected? Well, that's where we can come down here and use this icon right here, toggle mask overlay. So if I click on that, it should show me what is being masked out or what's being selected by the mask. So in this case, we see my penguin selected, cool. So now I need to track this forward and back because I know my penguin's walking, right? And like I said, this is a pretty simple, what I would think simple example for Resolve to track this penguin. So I'm just gonna hit the track forward button because I'm already at the first frame anyway. So I'm gonna go ahead and track forward. I'll put on the screen here how long that actually takes to do this clip, which is not that long, a couple seconds. So here we go. All right, so we got our object tracked here, which is the penguin. And uh, this clip's only about five seconds long, just under, yeah, just about five seconds. And it took maybe a minute, I don't know, I'll put the exact time on the bottom of the screen here. But let's go ahead and turn on our uh, our toggle here to see where is the mask. So if I see, I play through it, you see that penguin? I think that's masked out pretty good. I mean, that looks pretty good to me. So let's say maybe I wanted to, uh, you know, brighten up the penguin. Let's turn off our toggle for the mask here so we don't got to see that. It's going to move to a frame here. And let's just say, eh, let's just brighten this guy up a little bit. And, you know, you can do whatever. Maybe it's not brightening it up. Maybe it's something else. So if I play through the clip here, you can see, hey, our penguin looks a little bit brighter. He stands out a little bit more. Hey, that's not so bad. It did a pretty good job of tracking him. And then we were able to make an adjustment and it looks pretty good. Now, let's say maybe you wanted to do the background instead. You could come over here and click on this invert mask. And then that way we're going to affect the background here. Maybe if I just reset them, maybe, I don't know. I want the, the background to be darker. I don't know. You want the penguin to stand out? I don't know. You could do whatever you want. But you kind of see how this tool works here. And then eh, there's our penguin. Not too bad, right? All right, let's move into the next example. We're going to move a little bit quicker here now that you kind of see basically how this tool works. So in this clip here, again, from ArtGrid, if we uh, come through, you see that bird pop on the screen there. So let's go ahead and draw our mask. I'm gonna start with this frame in the middle because I want Resolve to be able to track the bird as he comes on the screen and then uh, he just stays on the screen. But I wanna see if Resolve can track him as he comes on. You got some motion blur going on in there and everything. So here's what we're gonna do. Click on your eyedropper with the plus. I'm gonna just draw over top of the bird here. I'm just gonna kind of make a little swoop motion here to try and get the different colors of the bird a little onto the orange there. And I'm just gonna leave it like that. Let's toggle on our mask and that actually looks pretty good. So now since we're in the middle of this clip, I'm actually gonna come down and use this guy right here, which is the track forward, then track backward. So let's go ahead. I'm actually, uh, let's fire up a little timer here. See how long this takes. And uh, yeah, we'll go from there. All right, so our track is done there. Now that clip, again, I think is about five seconds. And on my clock here, it took about a minute to do that. So. One thing that's gonna help out this particular clip is that the background is not very busy. So that makes it easier for Resolve to isolate this subject. But if I just click through and uh, I got my uh, my mask overlay on here, look at this. As this bird comes in, look at this. You got the motion blur, but the object mask tool is getting all that bird. Look at that. I mean, that, that's impressive, you know? The fact that you got the motion blur, even look at the tail, 
right up in this area right here. You know, you can see that it's picking it up. It's got some of the red in there. Does a really good job. So let's turn that off. Maybe I want to, you know, make them a little bit brighter here. I don't know, a little bit brighter like that. Look at that. Great. And if we turn off the, the uh, node here, there's our difference. You can see what's going on there. So once you get your object tracked and selected there and it, it's clean and it looks good, you can make any kind of change that you want, you know? I mean, I don't know. Change, change the color of the bird. I don't know. We want to make them look a little cooler, a little more orange. I don't know. Whatever you want to do. What do you want? Purple bird? I don't know. You can do whatever you want, right? So in this example, it worked good. And I wanted to see, can Resolve track an object going off the screen and or coming on the screen? And in this case, it did a good job. I think uh, I think it worked out really well. Now, notice I haven't had to change any of these other more advanced settings down here to refine my edge. What it's done so far has been okay, and uh, and I've been happy with it. Moving on to the next clip here, we have the, the buffalo bison, uh, this guy right here. Now, because of the colors in this uh, image here, maybe you could use your, your uh, you know, your keyer here and select the colors of this animal to be able to track it or do something with it. But we're going to use the object mask tool. So come on in here. Got my eyedropper with the plus selected. I'm going to go ahead and swipe down his uh, horns there, the face, the eyeball right on down to his body, kind of like that. Now let's see how well did the selection do by toggling on my mask. It does look pretty good. Let me come down in here. I'm gonna add a little bit right there, a little right there, maybe right there. And it looks like a little bit right in there. So that's not uh, not too bad there. Maybe what I even wanna do, oh, let's see, I'm missing his nose, which I'm, I'm probably okay with that, but let's just get some of the darker area there maybe, see, if, see how this works. So what I'm going to do also, I think, is come into the uh, the eyedropper with the minus here. And let's see if we can take out some of the, the sticks here. So they're pretty small, but if I zoom in, maybe I can just get on there like that a little bit. I don't know how well this is going to work. We're going to try it, you know, and see what happens here. Kind of take some of the sticks out. So it's saying do not track those areas. All right, now let's go ahead and uh, I'm just going to track forward since I'm at the beginning of the clip. Track forward. And get the timer going. Let's see how long this guy takes. All right, so our track is done. Again, about a five-second clip here. Now, this is a little bit more complicated for Resolve to figure out, and that's why it took about a minute and a half. So it just depends on your clip, how much stuff is going on in there. Obviously, the cleaner your clip and the less uh, stuff there is around the object you're trying to track, the better it's going to work out for you. So if I toggle off my mask and uh, let's just change the color of this guy a little, I don't know. Let's grab mid-tones here. Let's make them, I don't know, let's make them green, purple. So you can see it's kind of affecting those uh, those bushes a little bit there, the the branches. All right, maybe, maybe not the best, you know, maybe we'd have to clean it up a little bit here. I can try some of these. I could try uh, better and see how that does. Track it again, track the consistency, change that a little bit. You've got a lot of options here on the different things that you can try and see how well it works out. Maybe you can clean it up a little bit, clean up the blacks, clean up the whites, and just kind of see how it does. All right, so I played with these settings just a little bit. I, I think it cleaned it up a little bit. Um, and I just really, you know, boosted up some colors here uh, with our primary color wheels and stuff just to make this guy pop a little bit more. And you notice it's a little bit cleaner there around the branches and stuff. So I think that's pretty good. If I turn it off, let's see, you can see there's where we started from. I just brightened them up, made them a brighter color just so we can see the differences between what's going on with the background and the foreground and the object that we're tracking in this case, the guy with the big horns, right? So as your objects get a little more complicated in the scene when there's more going on, it is a little bit harder for Resolve to do, but it still does a great job. I mean, I would use this no problem. It seems to have done a great job to me. What do you guys think? Comment below. How do you think this tool is working out so far? But I'm pretty impressed with how well it's able to track the animal in this particular scene. There's a lot going on, a lot of those little sticks, and I think it did a pretty good job. Now let's move on to our soccer example here. So I want to select the grass and I want to make that a little bit greener, maybe a little bit darker, whatever it might be. So I'm going to come on into my eyedropper with the plus and I'm going to select the grass. Now there's different shades of grass, so I'm kind of just going to draw something like this. So hopefully it picks up most of those colors, turn on my overlay, and that looks pretty good. It got a little bit up on the sides there. I'm fine with that. I'm just going to leave that. So now I'm going to just go ahead and track it forward and we're going to see how well it does. All right, so this clip is done. It's about six seconds long, took a minute and 40. But look at the track on the grass here. If I just play through it, I mean, it did great. It went right around all the people. And all I selected was the grass. So that, that's fantastic. I think it did a great job there. So if I toggle off my uh, my mask there, 
Let's say I want to uh, boost the color a little bit, add a little bit of saturation here, and maybe make it just a little bit darker, you know, make it a little bright. And look at that, that looks great, right? And if I turn it off, see the difference in the grass there? Looks pretty good, you know, we darkened it up a little. A little saturation there. I think it does a great job. In this situation where we selected an entire surface, it did a great job. The object mask tool worked out perfectly. So if you like those four clips that we used, you definitely want to check out ArcGrid. That's where I got those. It really makes it helpful when you're working on a project because you can't always go out and film everything yourself, but you can use an awesome stock footage service like ArcGrid. And I mean, I love them. Hey, I use them all the time. They help spice up my videos. They do a great job. I love ArcGrid. Again, thank you ArcGrid for sponsoring today's video. Now let's jump into some examples that I filmed using my camera because, all right, it, always, it works out good with stock footage and, you know, in situations where you've got good, high quality video. Hey, not that my videos aren't high quality, but it's different, right? You try it at home and you're like, this doesn't work. Come on, man. So let's get into some of my clips here. So this first clip here, me just ripping through the woods, coming around a corner, taking it easy. I want to track the four-wheeler and me coming into that scene. Again, we're going to Come to about the middle of the scene here, select my eyedropper with the plus, and I'm going to select from my head all the way down. I'm going to get the uh, fenders there and kind of under the four-wheeler a little bit, kind of like that. I want to make sure I kind of try and grab all the colors that are included in the four-wheeler there. So you can see once I made the selection here, it automatically picks me out. Now, the reason I'm brighter here is because I did uh, make an adjustment to the clip, and I actually did it on the same node. I should have done it on a new node, but you can see here... That's what the scene actually looked like, and I had brightened up the entire scene just so we could see it like this. But let's say I invert that. You can see now my, me on the four-wheeler is darker here. So let's just go ahead and track this forward and back and see how well it does. So I'm going to use the track forward and track backward key. So let's go. Hit it. All right, so our track here is done. It's about a six-second clip. Uh, I'll put on the screen how long it took to do that. But if we play through this, check it out. It does a great job of tracking me, right? Now, I'm all I'm bright because that's, you know, the settings I had on here. But you can see... I can make myself brighter and darker here because the, the track is really good, right? I mean, all right, so that doesn't look so good. As it gets closer to the screen here, I probably want to, you know, work with some of the things over here to clean it up a little bit. And obviously, I'm not going to go that heavy-handed, but this is really just to see the example. But one thing I think is really great, look at this. If I zoom in here, it tracked it, and notice it didn't just put the tree in there. It actually tracked around the tree, which works out great. The program is actually able to see, hey, here's an object. I'm coming behind it. Let's just take the object that we want to track, which is me on the four-wheeler, and only track that. So, impressive. I think it does a good job. So, this first one, fairly simple. I think works out pretty good. All right, two more quick examples here of me. Similar situations here, just coming around a corner. And just, I, I'm curious to see how does it track, you know? So, now I'm a little farther away here. Let's make a new node, grab our plus tracker here. I'm going to select myself here, select the ATV. Boom, looks good. We're going to see how well does it look. Looks good. I'm going to track it forward and backwards. Let's see how well it does on this example. All right, the track is complete here. Let's go ahead and turn this on. Let's play through our clip here. Now let's zoom in. So, I mean, it, do, it does a good job even from far away. So let's back up here and just see. All right, so I can see that it's interacting with some of the elements like the tree. Now I could just come in here and take that out, right? And I might have to redo the track there. But uh, if I come back, it does a pretty good job. It gets the stick in there. All right, not not too bad. But you can see a lot of the, the smaller things here. It's not picking up. Maybe I would want to add in some, some strokes over here so that way Resolve knows, oh, hey, here's the object. Make sure you track it through there. But as I start to go back behind this tree here, it does a pretty good job of cutting that out. So, I mean, overall, I have to say not too bad, not too bad. I mean, it gets more complicated, again, by adding in more strokes that I want to include as well as using the minus uh, eyedropper there and taking out strokes that I do not want to include, it's going to help give Resolve a better idea of what I'm looking for in the scene, and it's going to help Resolve track it better. And I can always change it to the better track mode here too. That's going to make a difference too. And I just hit the retract button again there because I did add in that object removal stroke so that I didn't get the tree in there. But you can see it does a pretty good job. And again, when I came around the corner here, I could see that it doesn't select the leaves it only selects the ATV and me, which uh, which I think, I mean, that's pretty good, you know, because you've got some brown in there and the tires and whatever, but it's not selecting the leaves. Fantastic. I think that does a great job. And again, we can always adjust it a little bit more and fine tune it with our controls over here. But you can see if I turn on the mask here, look how good a job it's doing there, right? It's getting around that grass. I mean, that's impressive. I got to say, that is definitely impressive. And as I come and go past this tree, notice that tree, it doesn't try and mask it out or anything because it's behind. 
This tree, it does because it's in front of me in the foreground. So overall, that track worked out good. And I just have one last example here. Just a little bit different scene, some finer material here, different colors. I was curious on how well it would work out here. Uh, again, coming around a corner a little hot here, trying to get it to slide on purpose because well, I want to know, will that mask pick up as the four-wheeler swings back and forth? And as we've seen so far, it does. So I'm going to come in here and I'm just going to select myself again, actually make a new node, come in here, select myself, allow myself to introduce myself. And we're going to go ahead and track this guy forward and backward. And I expect it to work out well, just like it did in the other examples. And let's see what we can do here. This, our track is done here. It, it did a great job. Look at it, how I come through uh, the, the leaves here. And I've got my mask on. Look at that. As soon as I start to pop through right there, we can see it's red. Let me toggle this on and off so you can see it. Right? Look at that. I mean, that's fantastic. It cuts around the leaves and the, the, the brush there. I mean, that's, that, that's fantastic. I think that does a really great job. Continues to do it as I come around. And now I didn't select, I mean, everything. I just, I grabbed the colors I wanted from me on, on the four-wheeler moving, right? So, I mean, it just does a fantastic job here. Uh, let's uh, turn this off. I don't know. Let me change the colors a little bit here just for something different to look at. Make me a little more, uh, looks like I'm old school there, right? Now let's just play through. I mean, look at the track. It does a great job, right? And that's not having the object tracking mask on. Now, yeah, when it gets here, okay, I could finesse that edge a little bit. I could probably use the better setting. It does a great job here. I mean, I, I gotta say, I'm impressed with this object mask tool, guys. This tool is awesome. It, it does a really good job. Now, it, it does take some time for Resolve to process it. it. Takes a lot of power for this effect to work, but it does a great job. And in the examples that I tried out, I've tried out a few more than what we've seen here. It, it does a great job. I'm pretty impressed with how well it works. So if you've got Studio, get in there, try this out, and give it a shot. See how it works on some of your clips. I want to hear your experiences down below. Let me know how it works out. So a big thank you to ArtGrid for sponsoring today's video. Love your guys' stock footage. There is so much good stuff there. Like, I'm serious. I wouldn't be here telling you guys about it if I didn't love the products that they offer and the service that they provide with the stock footage because I'm not going to do that to you guys. I'm going to tell you guys stuff that's awesome that I use that I think could be helpful for you guys too. All right, guys, with that said, I'm out of here. I will catch you guys in the next video. Peace.